about the Yanks? I'll admit it, I'm concerned. Um, Teixeira can't seem to get healthy. Uh, Sabathia is not what he used to be. Um, the combination of those two things, along with the inconsistent play of a few of their guys. I mean, one minute, uh, Beltron is smacking three run home runs against the Mets. Another minute, he can't get a hit against the Blue Jays. Um, I'm concerned about it. It's not over yet. I haven't given up. I'm still going to believe in my Yankees. I'm going down with the ship. Uh, but I will tell you that I think the thing that concerns me is two things. David Price, who's an absolute stud. has. By the way, where did he go to school? Oh, yeah, Vanderbilt University. Go ahead. Price. Yeah. But Great I would tell you, I, I yeah. love Price, but I would tell you this. His, his level of production since he has arrived in Toronto has been Cy Young material. And when you combine that with the fact that Toronto has been doing what they've been doing without the services of Tulowitzki, I mean, I remember when Toronto lost the game, Boston came back on, on them the other night in the, bottom, in, the, in the top of the night. I give Toronto a lot of credit. They've been hanging in there, and David Price has been an ace. We'll see what happens tonight with Severino mm -hmm. uh, pitches for the New York Yankees, and Ivan Nova goes after that. Um, I still think the Yankees can win two of these three games, then they'll only be a game and a half back. Uh, so the jury is still out, but I'll admit that I am a bit concerned. Your Yankees should be ashamed of themselves if they can't catch the Blue Jays after the Blue Jays lost the primary reason I picked the Blue so Jays to be. Yes, he's, he's gone. I got a Romo-like bad break. They he cracked got, his shoulder blade. They still got Donaldson and Batista. Huh? And Price. I know, but the Tulo, remember, everything changed when he walked in the door. And now they're four and four since he's been gone, and there's no timetable for him to come back. So all of a sudden, you got the greatest cowboy-like break. <laughs> you, you got my Blue Jays. They're reeling without Tula Whiskey, and you What's can't New catch What's New York them? doing? Yeah. Another listen, sport. You got yeah. Encarnacion. He's been doing well for them. Plus, Russell Martin is somebody who used to catch for the New York Yankees, so he kind of knows what they do, how they do it. So that certainly helps as well. The Yankees that are, are at decided disadvantages, particularly without Teixeira, um, I recognize that, but they're still in the thick of things. They took two or three from the Mets last weekend. I'm not giving up on my New York Yankees. The jury is still out. We'll see what happens. Well, why don't you just go ahead and say they're going to win the East? Well, I'm worried about them right now. I thought they were going to win the East. They had a a six and a half game lead and they lost it in 13 days. That's correct. For crying out loud. Because of and the so, addition well, starting with Tulowitzki well, to the listen, Blue Jays. Again, but, but again, I think it's the addition of Price. How about that? Price is a stud. He's only got one. He's got like nine and one since he's arrived. He only there. gets to and play every starts. five days, no, well, right? He is, well, they yeah. got some bats, and we know they were scoring runs before mm -hmm. Tulowitzki arrived, but now it's even more lethal, and you've got Price shutting people down. And obviously, when you've got a great, great pitcher like Price, it infuses the rest of your pitching staff, at least to some degree. So we understand what's going on with Toronto. But again, it's not over so yet. So you won't concede, but you won't guarantee that's either, right. right? That is correct. Oh, that's well, a, that's, that's, boy, good, that's going that's way good, out on that's, that one. That's limit. a good way. That's a good yeah. way. See, I haven't backed off my Cowboys. I'm still saying, here we come Super Bowl, so what? right? That's because you are a Cowboy. Oh, okay. I'm not a Toronto yeah, Blue Ride them, Cowboy. All right? All right, they face off tonight, guys, in a crucial AL East clash. A-Rod and the Yanks taking on the Blue Jays. That is tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern. More first take in a minute. We had an upset special in college football Saturday when 15th-ranked Ole Miss defeated number two Alabama with turnovers just killing Nick Saban's squad. Both Cooper Bateman and Jake Coker played quarterback in that game, but did either separate themselves? Even though the Crimson Tide scored all five of their touchdowns with Coker under center, Bateman completed a higher percentage of passes. After this home loss, Bama fell to 12 in the polls and the Rebels climbed to third. Stephen A., what does this loss tell you about their head coach? Nick well, what it tells me is that Nick Saban needs a quarterback. He needs a quarterback that he can rely upon. Coker wasn't the answer. He only completed 46% of his passes. Yes, they were turning the ball over. Two turnovers by special teams, by the way. One, a daggone open the game, for crying out loud. Really disgusted me, put themselves behind the eight ball. But there's no denying that this kid, Chad Kelly, can ball. I like him. I like his athleticism. I like the arm that he has on him for Ole Miss. I was very, very impressed by him. So let's throw that out the way to get that, to, to just get that out the way. But Alabama had five turnovers, okay? Ole Miss didn't have any. And I think that that speaks to, you know, how good Ole Miss is, but also 
how much work Alabama has to do. I don't think that their defense is opportunistic. At least it was it was not this past weekend. They can play. They can get up in you. But at the same time, they don't appear to be as invincible as they have in years past. Since uh, since Nick Saban arrived at Alabama, Skip, their record is 93-18. and 18. He's won about 83% of his games. We all know what this man can do. Three national championships in four years. But he's gotten away with it by and large. I mean, McCarron was really, really good and effective and efficient in his system. Sims, not so much, even though I liked him last year. Coker, he's okay, but I, I kind of think that when a, when a guy like Bateman comes in and completes 78% of his passes, he might be somebody that you may need to look at. Of course, Derrick Henry is a stud. He can run the football, but they also don't have Amari Cooper this time around, and I thought that that was glaring as well. Not having Amari Cooper there, not having a quarterback that you can rely upon to really get the job done, combined with not protecting the football and a defense that doesn't seem as formidable I'm kind of surprised by all of this, Skip, simply because of this reason. Consistently over the last several years, Nick Saban has had the number one recruiting class in America. So I'm thinking about, I'm expecting elite, mm -hmm. you know, particularly on the defensive side of the ball, because I know how much that he's, you know, he, he you know, how much that's a fixture for Nick Saban. Yep. I don't understand for the life of me, Skip Bayless, why that wasn't. Uh, that didn't seem to be as prevalent. Obviously, they came back. They made a game of it uh, after being down about 27 to 10. We understand that. Uh, and, and they got a lot of heart, and they can come at it. They say that maybe they were a little bit too hype, maybe a little bit too anxious. No, I just think Ole Miss is pretty damn good. Um, and they've got a quarterback, and they didn't turn the football over. And I think the combination of that with the question marks at the quarterback spot by Alabama, <laughs> along with questions at the receiving spot because Amari Cooper, or he's no longer there, and they have no one to replace him on that level at this particular moment in time, I think that leaves a lot to be desired with Nick, ba uh, Nick, Nick Saban and this Alabama Crimson Tide are, are facing right now. I think they'll be okay. But national championship? No, I don't think they're going to be in that picture. Ole mm -hmm. Miss scored 24 points off those turnovers, too. So That's they right. were opportunistic. Yes, they were. Fair to say you're a huge Nick Saban fan? Huge. Huge. Give me one roll. Just, just. Roll <laughs> time! Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I, I just, I, now I, we got the table I, set. I, yes. I, love, I love what he stands for. I mean, it's not just about his coaching. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that he can look people in the face and let them know where he stands and why unapologetically. I respect that. I know someone like that. That's I direct. A couple so. people. Highlight of my year on the show is having Coach Saban come in and sit here. Loved it. Just always intriguing and entertaining and enlightening. And real. He's just He's real. He's real. Yeah. But I'm going to be objective now. He made his coaching bones on his defensive genius. And I don't throw that word around lightly because right. he was highly regarded as a defensive genius on the college level, if not the pro level. Some slippage there. Struggled now. a little bit. But now he's slipping. He's lost a little bit of his coaching fastball, if you will. Okay. Because I'm looking at his last nine games against top 15 teams at that moment that he played them. Mm -hmm. He's four and five in those games. And let me just quickly give you some of the scores. Please. Manziel put up 42 against Nick Saban's defense. Mm-hmm. Then in the kick six game, at, you know, against Auburn, 34 Auburn scored in that game. My Oklahoma Sooners, who weren't very good in that Sugar Bowl, right? Remember that one? Yeah. They scored 45 on Nick Saban's defense. That's right. And then of course Nick Saban's team was held to 17 last year at Ole Miss, turned right around against Auburn and gave up 44. I believe that game was in Tuscaloosa. Absolutely right. And then Ohio State semi national semifinal gave up 42 points mm -hmm. and now 43 at home. And I agree with you about Jim Kelly's nephew, Chad. He, he's got a special arm. That's what Jim called it. And it's, it's special. He, has he it. can whip it, baby. He has it. And, and again, he's the kid he's had big maturity issues, got kicked out at Clemson for clashing with the coaches, and then went to junior college in Mississippi. We know all I that. Think, I think he's over there. I think it looked like he was. I think he's that's over there. big time when you throw for 341 in Tuscaloosa, three Against touchdowns Alabama. and zero interceptions. That's big time because the defense at Alabama is no longer big time. I thought they were going to be because just on high school reps, blue chip, you look across the, the depth chart and you say, wow, 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 wow. And I thought early in the year with Derrick Henry, what a load he is carrying the mail. I thought they're going to be right back in it and they're going to be really tough to beat. And then this happened. Chad Kelly happened. 
Ole Miss happened, and again, they've got Alabama's number now. They are not afraid of Nick Saban and company. So is it fair to say that over the last, what are we doing here, three years, is it fair to say he's either in a coaching slump because he's the pipeline is still full. It's, it's still supplying at a high rate blue chip right. high school athletes, right? Right. Okay, what's happened then? And, and again, you, let, let me finish with this point. Please. They, they still can't recruit a quarterback, and I don't get it. How can Alabama yes. not recruit? How can Alabama not just say, you, totally. up yeah. there in Toledo, Ohio, or who, yeah. wherever, you in Seattle, Washington, we want you here at Alabama, and go get that guy. Is it because Nick doesn't want a star quarterback? He wants somebody who's a little more coachable, such as A.J. was? I, I don't know, like a, a sort of a coach on the field type, of, uh, if, if you will, a puppet. But... Here in your biggest game yet this year against a team that was going to be formidable on defense, you throw Cooper Bateman into the starting lineup on Saturday night? I'm not buying that. I thought that was a bad idea by Nick Saban, who am I to criticize the great Nick, but it blew up in his face because he had to yank him and throw Jake Coker back in there. That The continuity is destroyed. It's not fair to either kid because both of them struggled because of that decision. Well, that's what, but, but I think that what it says, Skip, is that when you got two quarterbacks, you don't have any. Okay. All right? And, that, and that's what it falls along those lines. You're trying to figure out how to win a game because you don't have confidence in either quarterback. So you make a valid point. I'm going to give you one other reason that you didn't bring up why you should be frowning at Nick Saban right now to some degree. I'm talking about the, the greatness of Nick Saban because yeah. you know how I feel about him and I consider him great. Skip Bayless, I watched this kid. Robert, what is it? What, what, how do you pronounce his name? Kim Dichi? I mean, mm. this dude, 305. Okay, I, but, Skip, but he was he was a top recruit Skip, in the country, but, 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 and, and he landed. His brother was at Ole Miss, and he landed right. there. Okay. But let me tell you this: I'm sitting there. The reason why I'm bringing it up because I'm sitting there saying, "How did you not get him?" Well, he's now, a I understand his brother's his there. Force. His brother, he's his, and his brother I, actually I, led the team into with ten tackles Saturday, but he yeah. had about six. This dude yeah, this right dude, here, this dude. he looks like a number he, one he, overall he, he, pick. He well, in the could be. he well could be. Ooh, Robert and, and Gimdichi. Gimdichi, yep. This, oh, yep. I, what, you, I was thinking about you because I remember in your classic line, jump off the screen. He leaps. That dude leaps off the yep. screen. I said, they, they can't block him. They couldn't block they him. They can't block him. No, He's everywhere. It didn't matter that even, he only had six tackles, mm -hmm. but he was everywhere i mean he was a nightmare he was the kind of dude where you're hearing his footsteps even when he's 10 feet away That's you're just correct. you're hearing something and you're thinking it's him because he has that kind of impact yeah that dude is special yeah i'm trying to tell you right now robert can teach he might be the number one overall pick i he mean he be. is special yeah coach herm coached him at the all-star game coming out of high school and came Ooh. in here the next Come, monday and you said don't, you don't see me oh my lord you do you not know? see me reacting right. over a college football mm -hmm. player like that. I don't do that. Yeah. That dude? Oh, my lord. Real deal. Mm -hmm. Real deal. Real, real deal. I, I'm talking possible number one overall pick. Well, you yes. got a couple NFL squads that can 305 play. pounds and he comes at you. Woo! Ooh, he was special. All right, we got another team down south with quarterback questions right now. Tony Romo won't need surgery on his broken collarbone, but are the Cowboys making a mistake? That's up next. Stay here.